No Labels is pushing ahead with its effort to run a third-party candidate in 2024, despite efforts by leading Democrats who fear that could split the anti-Trump vote if he is the nominee and defeat Joe Biden. Maverick, West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin is going to speak at the No Labels Town Hall in New Hampshire this afternoon, joined by former governor, ambassador, and presidential candidate John Huntsman. That raises new concerns about whether a third-party candidate could help Donald Trump by chipping away voters from President Biden. Joining me now, NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hilliard in Manchester, New Hampshire, and the Bulwark editor-at-large, Bill Crystal, founding director of Defending Democracy Together. So, Vaughn, these two, Joe Manchin, John Huntsman, they could make for an interesting unity ticket if they had support, but that could really hurt Joe Biden, according to all reports, all polls. And, and, right. Andrew, let's be clear about just how big of a step this is. Publicly, Joe Manchin is going on the campaign trail. He has not ruled out his own third-party presidential run, and he has made a decision to come with the organization No Labels here to New Hampshire today for a town hall. And No Labels is not just some small organization that's raised a couple thousand dollars. Their director tells me that they are nearing a $70 million war chest to put this No Labels unity presidential ticket on the ballot in all 50 states. They are serious about this. I've talked to several folks that are working as part of this effort, and they say that, look, you know, according to NBC's own polling, 70 percent of Americans don't want Joe Biden to be running for president again. 60 percent don't want Donald Trump to be running for president again. They feel like this is their opportunity to have the most legitimate, serious third party effort in more than 100 years, dating back to when Teddy Roosevelt gave the White House another shot here. And so we have not seen this in our politics. Ross Perot sort of came out of nowhere, right? And, of course, Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, they had their impacts in 2016. Ralph Nader had his in 2000. But this is something unlike we have seen in modern American politics, Andrea, potentially, if they were to actually field uh, candidates like a Joe Manchin or a John Huntsman to run on this ticket. Well, at his peak, Ross Perot got 20 percent of the vote, Bill Crystal, uh, No Labels co-chair, former Senator Joe Lieberman, Democratic senator, well, then an independent, is dismissing concerns that this effort is going to help Donald Trump. He says people are overreacting. Um, what's your take on that? I think people are reacting correctly. I'm not an enemy of no labels. I did some work for them in 2017 for the think tank side on what a centrist agenda might look like with my friend Bill Galston. So I'm not against promoting centrism, but the fact is every no labels is not going to win. The no labels candidate is not going to win in this polarized country in 2024. The Democrat and the Republican will each get about 40 percent, No, la at least. No labels might get 20 percent. Every piece of evidence from polling to history suggests that more of that 20 percent will come from Joe Biden than Donald Trump. Trump supporters more uh, solid, more, more committed. Uh, there'll, there'll be some centrists who will be seduced into voting for you know someone younger than Joe Biden, uh, what looks like a centrist ticket. And so it could well defeat Joe Biden. And it is not responsible centrism. It is not responsible moderation to elect Donald Trump. And, Bill, I know you already met with no labels and tried to make this argument. Um, you also, on the Democratic side, have RFK Jr., a Democratic presidential candidate, pushing COVID conspiracy theories. Last week in a video obtained by The New York Post, um, he said some things that are raising a lot of eyebrows. Let's show that. COVID-19, there's an argument that it is ethnically targeted. COVID-19 attacks certain races. COVID-19 is targeted to attack uh, Caucasians and, uh, and, uh, and uh, black people. The people who are most immune are Ashkenazi Jews and, uh, and Chinese. So Ashkenazi Jews, the majority of Jewish people in America, and Chinese people are supposedly immune or more immune from COVID. He later tweeted that the New York Post was wrong, that they misinterpreted his comments. It's hard to misinterpret what he said. Um, but he does enjoy yeah, considerable is, support, it, like 20 percent support among Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, I think that'll go down. But this is a Putin talking point, incidentally. This isn't just out of nowhere. This is that the U.S. is de developing biological weapons. Remember, that's one of his big arguments in Ukraine, repeated by, unfortunately, some Republicans, many Republicans, uh, and that those are sort of targeted at a particular group. So this isn't just a random, foolish conspiracy theory. It's a Russian, a Putin conspiracy theory. 
uh, and it, it now been reported now that they filed their second quarter, the first quarter, I guess it is finance uh, reports, that a large uh, amount of Bobby Ke of Robert Kennedy Jr. support uh, comes from Republicans, from major Republican donors. So this is, and, and Steve Bannon encouraged him to run right, several months ago. So I think this is part of an attempt, to, again, to weaken Biden. Some of the label support comes from major Republican donors. Uh, and this is, you know, Donald Trump, whatever you think of him and Bannon and all these people, they know how to—they're not foolish about politics exactly, and they're pretty ruthless at times, and they want to weaken the Democratic nominee however they can.